before I really get into today's video, I just wanted to quickly thank you guys for um, getting me to pass the 500 mark, and now we're even at 510 subscribers. Thank you all so much. Uh, it's a blessing to have you guys, um, even though the world is in a very stressful, scary state right now. Um, I understand that it's um, kind of fucking terrifying to be alive right now, but it's all going to be okay. And I'm glad that even during this time, some of you guys um, either just stumbled upon my channel or heard my begging on my Instagram <laughs> and finally uh, took a chance on my content and clicked the subscribe button. I'm very thankful for everybody. Thank you all so much. And um, just stay safe, stay healthy, just be cautious, and take care of yourself. Let's get the fucking video going. So I get that I'm about two years late to the party, and this video looks scarily short for a video on a Persona game, but Pizza Bomb recently got me a copy of Persona 5 Dancing, as well as a pre-order for Persona 5 Royal, which at the time of this recording will be released in just two days. Bless her beautiful soul. I've had my copy of Persona 5 Dancing, which has no cover for some reason, for about two weeks. I was able to play every track and unlock the all night difficulty, and um, I just want to give my opinion up front without the theatrics or extra bullshit or is it good or is it bad? Fuck that shit. I just want to go straight forward because P5R comes out in a few days. I don't have the fucking time. I want this shit done with. I think Persona 5 Dancing is just okay, but I want to love it or even just like it. However, Atlas pulls so much bullshit that it turns me off like a fucking light switch. The actual dancing part is fine. I'm not a fan of dancing or rhythm games in general. Even just the normal difficulty was too much for me. I felt like a deer in headlights the entire time. I was more in this game for Persona than the actual dancing part. I just wanted to revisit the P5 cast and dress them up in any fucking way I could think of. And the idea of having a more arcadey game based around replaying stages as opposed to being more story focused isn't inherently a bad idea, but if you're going to do that, I need the content to justify my $60. I need songs, I need characters, and I need costumes. If the story doesn't matter and this is all a dream, then why not add more Persona 5 characters? Why not go for a more wacky experience instead of sticking to the J-pop style established in Persona 4 Dancing? The remixes of the original songs from Persona 5 feel like completely different songs, and not in a good way. They feel far too fucking similar to Persona 4 Dancing's soundtrack. And yeah, I got it for $20 two years after release, so why am I complaining? Why am I complaining? Because even at $20, I feel like I got gypped. And that's all because of the DLC. Contrary to belief, I don't hate downloadable content. I think that within reasonable means, it can be beneficial and give an aging game a second life. Spider-Man PS4's DLC? Amazing. Absolutely worth it. Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind? Personal feelings aside, you definitely get your money's worth. But Persona, not just P5 dancing, not even just P3 dancing, but the base Persona 5, and most likely Persona 5 Royal, have the most scummy, greedy, and needlessly overpriced DLC I've seen on this side of the fucking Mississippi River. It actually pains me, because Atlas's games are usually so fucking good and are definitely worth buying at full price. But then they just do shit like this, where they charge $7 for costumes from previous Atlas titles per game. What the fuck? To get the original Persona 5, as well as all of its DLC, is $85 on the PSN, with the game itself only being $20. So I imagine that the original price of all this fuckery was somewhere around over $100, if I can remember correctly. And I don't fucking care enough to do research. Anyway, with Persona 5 Dancing, I thought it would be different, but I guess not. The costume season pass is $20, the accessory season pass is $20, and the song season pass is $25. Now, to be fair, the latter two is DLC for both Persona 5 and Persona 3 Dancing. Doesn't make it not bullshit though. Even if you buy the Dancing Endless Night collection, which includes both games for $45 on Amazon right now, that, as well as the DLC, would come out to $110. Not only is it obvious that these games were made for Dirt cheap, I mean, you can just tell by looking at it, but I feel like both P5 and P3 Dancing 
were streamlined. Regardless of being in development for three years, starting all the way back in 2015, Persona 5 Dancing feels barren and a little too stale when compared to all of the other Persona spinoffs. It feels like there was no extra time taken to polish the entire experience and to just go that extra mile. Just by looking at P5 Dancing's UI, I'm getting the dancing part, but I'm not getting Persona 5. How on earth could you develop a spin-off to one of the best JRPGs in recent memory and not capitalize on one of that game's strongest aspects? I look at Persona 3 dancing and they're the exact same game. Sure, there's different backdrops and fonts, but they're the same game with different casts and different music choices. It's Pokemon. It, it took me fucking six minutes to yell that it's Pokemon. It's more Pokemon and Persona than I'm used to. I don't like it. <laughs> Persona Q, Persona Arena, and even Persona Scramble all have a definitive style. They adapt Persona to a new genre, and most of the time do it very well. While yeah, Persona being a dancing game was funny the first time, you have to give me something to warrant being a sequel, let alone being two separate sequels, both full price. I mean, you just have to show that there's a reason to be a successor to something. What about these games, specifically Persona 5 Dancing, because that's the only one I played, makes it better than Persona 4 Dancing? Which, by the way, did you think I would let this slide? Atlas fully ported Persona 4 Dancing from the Vita to PS4, which is a good thing. I think it is a genuine fucking issue that porting Persona 4 Golden and Dancing wasn't at the top of their list after the release of Persona 5, but two dancing sequels were. So yeah, P4D port is a good thing. However, the only way to get it is to buy the aforementioned Dancing Endless Night Collection. Why? Why do this? Why restrict your game so that less and less people can enjoy it? It makes no sense besides being a marketing tactic to get fans of Persona 4 Dancing who can't afford a PlayStation TV anymore to buy your overpriced games. Again, Atlas, I love your work. I fucking love almost all the games you're putting out, but this is bullshit. At the end of the day, these two games lack a true story mode, are sold with a ridiculous amount of DLC, and just aren't made with enough love, care, and time to warrant a $60 price tag. If you're a Persona fan, I highly suggest that you buy it for no more than $20. Anything over that, and it's just highway robbery at that point. These aren't bad games. And that's the frustrating part, really. They play well enough, there's enjoyable character interactions, but there's nothing really there under the surface, and that's truly, truly disappointing. I fucking hate using this word, I feel like it's a, a buzzword that's just been used everywhere and it's lost all meaning, but these games are cash grabs. But here's the thing, every other Persona spinoff is as well. However, they have a reason for existing. They're fun enough that they deserve that $60 price tag. And while I love Persona 5 and the idea of revisiting my favorite friends all over again, that can only take you so far. If you didn't adore Persona 5 or Persona 3, or if you hate DLC and grindy games, or even if you've just never played a Persona game, avoid this. Go play something else. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I tried to make it short, but ended up longer than I fucking wanted it to be. Um, I know that this sound setup is echoey. Um, I tried ordering acoustic foam, but it's not going to be here for a month. Because that's the world that we're living in right now, just carry time, I'm not complaining, sorry that you have to deal with this right now, but there's nothing else to do, new setup, shit like this happens. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, have a good night, please, please, please stay safe and healthy, I'll see you guys next time, peace out. I'm never gonna say peace out again, I sound like a fucking jackass.